Come say hi. <laughs> say hi, followers. <laughs> tell, it, tell everyone who Jodie is. He's my friend and he goes to the same school me and we're in the same class. Hey, wait Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. We have just come back from Ireland where we were for a week over Easter and it all went pretty smoothly. Well, a few hiccups here and there, but it was really nice to get back and see everybody. Recently, we've noticed that Luca is struggling a little bit. Oh, Come on. Yeah. Having a sibling with autism is not easy, you know, and I think Luca is getting to the age now where he's starting to notice Dylan's different to the other kids. And also in our family, we naturally make allowances for Dylan, especially when we're abroad or when we're going somewhere, because if we don't make little allowances for Dylan, then we will never get anywhere. For example, we play the music that Dylan wants to play in the car, because if he listens to anything else, then he can get quite upset. So unless he wants to be on his headphones the whole time, you know, it's quite difficult. Luca. So while we were in Ireland, we really noticed that Luca is finding things really quite tough. Where's Luca? Oh man. How do we do this, Luca? Again. It's the first time really all of us as a family have been away together in the past year and a half. And you know, day-to-day -day life, you're so busy and so hectic, you don't really have time to stop and actually focus on each of your children and you know, you, you try hard, but life goes on. It's only really when you're on holiday do you really have the time to actually realize kind of what's going on, which is why holidays are so important for you all to reconnect. And it became very apparent to myself and Andrew that Luca is really quite, he's, he's withdrawing a little bit, to be honest with you. Luca! 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 Come on! he's being a bit silly. And he's getting quite anxious, and he is finding it, difficult to, to to kind of talk to us. I mean, he's he's a six-year-old boy. You know, I ask him a question, how are you feeling? Good. You know, how was your day at school? Fine. That's what kids do, right? They don't really give you a long explanation. But I really wanted to find out how Luca was really feeling. I really wanted to take Luca to a play therapist in Dublin, Tiggy. And she is so great with kids. She's a very well-known play therapist in Dublin. And to see what comes out of it. Play therapy is really good for children on the spectrum because it can really help with their communication, their emotional skills, it can help them learn how to play, how to react in social situations. A, a play therapist can also use play to get to the root of what is really troubling a child. So this is why I really wanted to send Luca because even though he doesn't have autism, it's very difficult to get from him what's really going on. By sending Luca to Tiggy, I'm hoping that she will be able to help Luca understand where his anxiety is coming from. And then she can tell me what she found out. I'm not allowed to actually be in the session. So uh, it was amazing that we got the camera in there. Even though you're not allowed to hear what actually happened in the session because that's child protection and you know Luca might get his lawyers on me or something. So we can't actually hear what happens in the session, but um, I'm getting the report next week. So I'll let you know how we got on with that. So they make him, they make him lose his temper. Yeah. yeah. I'm Tiggy Hudson, I'm a play therapist and psychotherapist. Um, I've worked with children for a long time, over 30 years in my art school, and as a play therapist for the last, since 2010, so nine years. I work with a variety of children, issues, anxiety, parents that are split up, you know, kids in the middle that are having issues, need a little bit of help, and I also work with autistic children on the spectrum. So before I would start, I would have an intake session with the parents and, you know, cover the main issues, what they want me to work on with the child. You know, mostly it's maybe anxiety, helping with their anxiety and uh, the social skills with interacting with peers. Then after six sessions, I would have a review with the parents, bring them up to date, see how the child's going in the wider world. And quite often parents would see subtle things would happen. Maybe it's calmer, maybe bedtimes are a little easier. And they would say, oh yeah, there is, you know, there's a bit of a shift. Um, but it usually, I would suggest 12 sessions would make a significant difference. 
in their play, they're working out their stuff that they have difficulty with in their life. So if something comes out where two characters in the play are, you know, having an argument, they're working through something that may happen, be happening in real life. In that case, I'm reflecting, you know, I'm there for them, fully present for them, and they lead and I follow. So I don't take part in the game unless they want me to, or I might say, you know, do you want me to be this character and what does this character say? So in the play development, right from when you're, you know, a little baby, you go through phases of play, like one of the early ones would be messy play. So you're playing with sand, mud, spilling water, that sort of thing. Then as a child develops, they do parallel play. So they play, will play alongside another child. So that could be three to four. And then they start interacting with each other. And then when you get to five, six, seven, you know, you have children making up um, quite extensive imaginative uh, scenarios. Sometimes um, a child on the spectrum might miss one of those stages in the play development. So when they come to play therapy, I have the facilities ready for them to do messy play if they want to, and then they would go to that and work on that area that they, they need to work on in order to develop the play. So what I was doing with Luca would have been the type of work that I would do with children who are on the spectrum, helping them to connect with their feelings, and that's why I get them to make their own inside out pom-poms like these ones which represent happy, sad and angry and this is to help them go back to the inside feeling so if you're feeling angry and that's the feeling that's represented to the world inside you're feeling sad, you're feeling confused, you know you might have all the other feelings and if you're able to bring a child back to what's going on inside and how they're feeling inside that quite often can help them. I give them a cut out of a like a little gingerbread person and you put a feeling on the front so it might be sad and then I say if this little gingerbread person well, I could say if you were this gingerbread person and you felt sad how would you feel where would you feel sad that's all done in the third person I don't direct it at the child saying if you're sad so what happens with the gingerbread man is you do lots of circles on a page and you write down all the feelings that you have, the physical feelings like you might feel like stamping your foot because you're angry, inside you might feel hurt or sad and then you put little glitter stars in each circle and then you put them into a bottle of water and then whenever the child has a, a time where they, they're asked to do something and they don't want to do it, they shake the bottle, they see all the, the stars spinning around through their physical frustration and then as they put it down and watch the stars spinning around and settling down they imagine settling and calming and going back to being balanced. Quite often for children on the spectrum they need to teach themselves how to interact with other children. It doesn't come naturally. You know a lot of children will be you know when they're three or four they naturally pick up you know they know how to interact with other children but children on the spectrum have to actually observe other children how they interact with each other or have a little help autistic children are usually very bright that they can pick it up and you know then develop friendships. This one is a really good one I mean there would be several books that would be similar but this is a really good one. I would show this to the child and I would say you know once they've made their little inside out feelings you know if some if you went up to a person and said can I play with you and the child said no you can't well then you think about your feelings inside and try and work out how you feel and how you'd make yourself feel better. That's directive play therapy, so it's psychoeducational. One thing I did notice when he came out of the session with Tiggy, he was so calm. Luke is usually all over the shop and is, you know, he's just crazy. And when I went there, he was really calm and he was really able to express how he felt, which was really nice. And he was really proud to show me, you know, the little uh, emotion balls that he had. Luca, what did you learn today? Um, I learned how to make pom-poms. You learned like how to make the, the, what are they called, inside out pom-poms? Yeah. And then when he wanted to be happy, he kept rubbing it on his face and rubbing it on my face. So it was really good for him to identify his feelings. I'm looking forward to going back and having Luca have some more sessions. And if anyone is in Dublin, I will put Tiggy's information below. She's a fantastic um, play therapist who is in Dorky. I hope you found that a little bit useful to get a little insight into what play therapy 
is and how it can help your child. As you know, play therapy is amazing for children on the spectrum and it worked amazingly well with Dylan. Um, but because Dylan was non-verbal, it worked for him in a different way. But I actually think play therapy can be really useful for siblings of autistic children in being able to express themselves because children are still learning to express themselves. And whether you have autism or not, it's really important to learn that skill. And you know, I'm still learning on how I can help and support Luca. If you have been through this and you have any tips for me, I would really love to hear them. If you could leave a comment below or Instagram me. So guys, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. As always, please like us, share us, leave a comment below, and I will see you next week. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Oh no, they're back. <laughs> <laughs>